Education. It is the key to our evolution. It has enabled us to evolve from a single-celled organism into the dominant species on the planet. This process is slow, normally taking thousands and thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps, well, backward. It's new mutants. Welcome, class, to Ghoul School, where, much like Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, our curriculum is primarily geared toward putting children in terrible, terrible, terrible danger. Incidentally, Professor Bloodstone was recently revealed to be a demon hunter in disguise, and so her elective course, Sharing Your Pain 101, let's all talk about our specific weaknesses, has been put on indefinite hold. Now, please welcome your hated and feared substitutes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another period at the Ghoul School. I am one of your three hosts, Brian Stevie Stork, which means nothing to most... Most anyone, but it's a thing, I promise. Well, maybe we'll understand it later. I am Nolan... Uh, not a clue of what to say now, Vinoy. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Caroline, corpse you found outside, night. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the dark circles under my eyes are becoming quite intense, so... <laughs> Starting to, to look the part. Yeah, it's finals time, everybody. And, uh, and you know what that means. It's time for to watch New Mutants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is what a, a wonderful segue. <laughs> which is a a recent, uh, the most recent film that we've ever done for this podcast. Um, the last of the Fox X Men. The movies. last of the Fox X Men movies. Uh, it was not supposed to be the last of the Fox X Men movies. No, it was not. Um, it was supposed to come out how long ago, Nolan? Uh, let's see. It was originally set to be released on April 13th, 2018. Um, to give some context, this movie started filming in July of 2017. Holy that shit. That is over three years ago. And the first trailer um, the first trailer came out in fall of 2017. So a little background on uh, the three of us. The three of us started school at UNC School of the Arts in uh, August of 2017. We are now seniors, <laughs> and that was when we were freshmen. So it has been a long release, and it was just it just came out a month ago. That's so many, absolutely crazy. So many stages of our lives and the world as a whole. Like imagine the things that we all believe to be true when New Mutants started now. filming. Yeah, uh, craziness. Also, uh, let me just give a let me give a little bit of a just a a release uh, sort of schedule yeah. in terms of how this how this movie came around. So it was released on August twenty eighth, twenty twenty. So a little over a month ago. Um, it was set to be released in April 13th, 2018, and then it was delayed to February 22nd, 2019 to avoid Deadpool 2, which mm -hmm. came out, I believe, in May of 2018. Valid. And then it was pushed to August 2nd of 2019 <laughs> to avoid Dark Phoenix, <laughs> yeah. which was also <laughs> delayed until it was supposed to be in November of 2019. Then it was delayed till, uh, or no, that came out, that came out. Gosh, that movie was also delayed a bunch as well. <laughs> and then it was delayed to April 3rd, 2020, but then the world exploded. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that was also, and this also, this all happened in the middle of all this. Um, Disney bought Fox. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that threw everything off. And so this movie is a horror movie. Uh, surprise. We're talking about it on <laughs> Ghoul School. It's a horror movie, but it's also an X-Men movie. And Disney was not down with a horror movie uh, or uh, a superhero movie that was also a horror movie. And so there was a lot of, uh, we're going to push the date this way. We're going to push the date this way. We're going to have you reshoot this, or we're going to have you do this, X, 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 Y, and Z, because they didn't really like what the movie was. Yeah. Um, and so it was then rescheduled for August 28th, 2020, uh, in a sort of mixture of a theatrical and digital re release. Yeah, this so did have crazy. a, because there was talk that it was going to go directly and only to streaming. It did have a theatrical release, 
which feels unconscionable for uh-huh. a movie yeah. like New yeah. Mutants. One of the only movies that came out in theaters this year. Yeah. Uh, um, it's this movie and Bloodsport with Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so to give a little bit of background on the New Mutants themselves and why it is so, why everything about this movie is so weird. Before um, you do this, can I give you my blind concept of what this movie is oh absolutely yeah what do you what do you think the new mutants are so all i hear right now is that it's called new mutants it's about x-men and not old mutants yeah these are some new 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 a horror movie and that's it that's all i got so far so my concept is Mm -hmm. that all of the old cast of x-men people yeah get consumed by new cast members and like, then it's mm. just an x-men film <laughs> but the consumption is yeah. the scary part and uh-huh. that's why disney was like uh 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 because cannibalism is scary and, right uh, so i'm assuming what you're saying is that anya taylor joy the star of this movie ate michael fassbender yes one of the stars of dark phoenix yes as, uh, the character known as magneto well it's like not necessarily so it's like i don't know a lot about x-men but if you have one guy playing magneto Uh a new magneto eats him right Right. yeah and that's why taylor joy yeah michael fassbender ate uh ian ian mckellen and yeah right yeah that makes sense uh that's that's what i think this movie is about so first glance shockingly stunningly you're not entirely wrong from, Are from you the comic book. Are you fucking kidding um, me? So I read... Wait. Other, so <laughs> there are some similarities. So I read uh, in preparation for this, because I, I knew about New Mutants, um, but I had never really engaged with them much. So I read the first couple issues of New Mutants and did a little bit of research. Uh, and so basically the intent of the New Mutants was... This was in like the, the 80s. This was a Chris Claremont creation who if Ooh. if stan lee uh and jack kirby are the uh creators the, the fathers of the x-men chris claremont is the most important writer of the x-men um dark he, phoenix you know he that. yeah he wrote dark phoenix he was the first writer to include wolverine on a team he created storm and you know it, this is cool. like the guy he's great so as he was writing these characters for like a decade um all of them basically grew to the point that most of them were faculty at the school most of them were they were adults um like us faculty of the ghoul school exactly (laughs) so uh he the intent of the new mutants was to introduce this kind of other group that could be kids again and could show what it was actually like to be students at the xavier school so it's a baby muppet situation sort of except it got except there's no scooter Except, well, except there's no scooter. And it also very quickly became way more out there and weird than the mainline X-Men were. Cool. Um, it yeah. became a lot more fantastical, a lot more weird science fiction. The power sets of the characters were a lot wilder. Um, weird enough to where they could make a horror movie when they adapted it for... Yeah, you know, and it's, and I looked yeah. into like if the New Mutants were ever like horror-based, and uh, the short answer is no. <laughs> they were never <laughs> horror-based. But the characters' power sets do lend themselves pretty well to horror. There's a character who turns into a werewolf. There's a character whose power is basically to take people's, like, most traumatic thoughts, or, like, darkest impulses in their brain and make them physical holograms. Oh. Um, yeah. And she, like and she, can't, she can't control it uh, oh. at first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, you know, there, there, and then there's characters with more superhero powers. Like, there's a guy who's basically the Human Torch and, you know, that stuff. There's, there's um, crazy shit to where it feels like Chris Claremont was just throwing darts at, like, a wall of sticky notes of, like, this could be fun. Yeah, you there's know? a there's a girl who, uh, her main power is that she can open a portal to actual limbo. Like, like the Terrifying. metaphysical limbo. <laughs> yeah. That is existential um, nightmare. Yeah, imagine being a teenager and accidentally <laughs> opening a portal to limbo. Um... And also something interesting about them, which I wonder if they're going to represent in the movie, I am worried that they won't, uh, is that one of the intents of the New Mutants was to have every single character be from a totally different background. Mm-hmm. Um, like, there's a there's a character from Brazil, there's a character from Scotland, there's a character from, like, they're from all over the place. Um, which was also the intent of his first X-Men run. 
which is like we don't think about it because it's like the iconic x-men run of wolverine and storm and all those guys but the intent of that run is that every single character is from a different country and it's the same kind of thing with this and i get the sense from the trailers that i've seen for this movie that it might not do a great job with that well um, there's some con- there was some controversy about that because the brazilian character is played by um is played by a Brazilian actor, but is mm-hmm. like a, a white Brazilian actor. Right, and in the comic, he is definitely not. Um, yeah. So what should I go into this expecting? Give give me like a two-sentence, what should I prepare myself for before we dive into this? Um, I have no idea, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's, I haven't I even mean, seen the trailer. It's going to be weird. It's going to be... My my weird. hope is that they lean fully into how weird these characters' powers. I mean, Legion, I think, originated in New Mutants. Um, oh, that's from the, cool. From the TV show, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I Legion Legion for for those that don't know is Professor Professor X's son who is schizophrenic, um, but has a crazy amount of telepathic power. Because every yeah. one of his uh, personalities has a different power, which is an awesome yeah, cool. concept for a character. But um, I would expect. I don't think we're gonna see the actual X mansion in this. I think this is going to be like, they're all in an asylum or something. I think from that's, the trailers yeah, I think that's like, the I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's like a, a stinger at the end where they're headed for the X school. But I think it's just going to basically be a bunch of weird, a bunch of weird kids running around an asylum. <laughs> that would I'm be my guess. so excited. Yeah. I wouldn't be excited. I think, I think it's going to be mediocre. <laughs> yeah. I would all, I'm also expecting it to be kind of No, mediocre. I'm excited for it to be mediocre. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Well, take us away, Spooky Dark Spell. Spooky Dark Spell, go. <laughs> like a Pokemon. <laughs> go, Spooky Dark Spell. All right, let's watch this fucking movie. I'd like to begin with a quote from Bob McLeod. Uh, the original artist of the New Mutants. He says, this is from a a Facebook post, I was very excited when I heard they were making a New Mutants movie. I thought making it into a horror movie was perhaps an interesting idea, but not at all how the characters should be introduced to the public at large. But hey, my character's in a movie. I never would have thought that would actually happen. But then I was disappointed when they didn't give Danny braids, although I like Blue Hunt. I was disappointed when Rain wasn't a redhead with spiky hair, although I adore Maisie Williams. I was disappointed that Sam isn't tall and gawky, although I do like Charlie Heaton. But mainly I was very disappointed that Roberto isn't short and dark-skinned. Yet another example of Hollywood whitewashing, that there's just no excuse. So basically, Josh Boone erased everything I contributed to the way the characters look. And now... The movie has come out at last, and apparently they've credited someone named Bob MacLeod as co-creator. They couldn't even be bothered to check the spelling of my name sometime in the last three years. And that can't be fixed. That will be on the movie forever. I think I'm done with this movie. Ugh. Oh. Alright, may, may I, may I, uh... May I oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck this movie! <laughs> <laughs> So, dear Ooh. listener, we have just watched The New Mutant, and it made me... Uh. <laughs> I lost my faith in filmmaking there for a bit. <laughs> um, I, I had a real moment of crisis where I was like, I don't know if I want to make movies if movies can be this. <laughs> there are uh-huh. things... There are things in this movie that I liked. And I There are two things in this movie that I liked. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple things I liked. I wonder if we wow. have the same things. For one thing, um I liked the visual design of magic of uh, uh, uh Taylor Joy. Um I thought it was yeah. cool. I thought it was fucking ra- Oh, spoilers for the movie, by the way, um, I thought in it, every single one. Yeah, of our podcasts, who's I know, I know, but movie? people might be coming in because New Mutants, and they don't. But okay. so I, I, uh, I thought it was fucking rad that they actually gave her like the metal arm and the sword that glows, and that they cool. that they leaned fully into Limbo and all that stuff. I thought that was cool. 
um i, I agree even like while i while i think in general the effects are not good i i Ooh. uh i did like that when she's fighting stuff like it'll like flash that she's in limbo and then flash out thought that was cool i cannot most of her effects weren't off yeah her, her stuff wasn't that bad and also i was shocked and 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 surprised in a great way by the fact that fucking Lockheed, the little purple dragon, is in this, yeah, and not yeah, just as a puppet. Like it's I the actual the puppet, dragon. Though. No, I the puppet's great. The puppet's great. my favorite part of the entire movie. Yeah, the puppet's yeah. great. It's a wild concept. I, I, I'm still not entirely sure how it works. Yeah, me either. In context of the movie, how it becomes alive, but that doesn't matter. It's really cool. Um, and I also like. Well, I think somebody else can bring up the other thing that I liked because I think that we all. Had the same is that thought. the thing that I is yes, the only I think so. factor yeah. in this movie? Yeah. Okay, the so there's... That, the thing that Caroline and I were yelling at each other via There's lesbians. Text. There's lesbians in this it's one. It's gay. And it's they're gay. not... And it's not released in a tweet by the director a, a month later. And it's, yeah. it's actually <laughs> like, in the movie. Actual, like, it's not Rise of Skywalker. Look in the background. They kiss. Yeah. And they also, like, don't... It's... They don't draw attention to it. Yes. Yeah. And the movie kind of sucks in all of its writing but they were able to portray a lesbian relationship that was positive and yeah. Yeah. non-abusive and non-manipulative which is a struggle for a lot of movies and neither of them die which i was not expecting. and neither of them died yeah. yeah there was no controversy within the film about the fact that they were gay and yeah. even and they even seem to genuinely like each other and like they're both young characters and it yeah. was like this sort of childish like oh hi like i, I really like you and it, it was sweet even the super misogynistic, uh, uh, re- even Roberto, like, he's cool with it. Like, he doesn't, there's not a bit where he's yeah. like, what, gay people? Ugh. Which, like, like <laughs> I was wa- waiting yeah. for any moment when he Same. was just going to be like, yeah. girls kissing? Ew, I only like that in porn. Like, yeah, yeah, there yeah is, I was going to say, he would either say ew or that's hot. There is yeah. a metric fuck ton of Native American racism for no reason. Oh, um, yeah. But, yeah. Who knew Russian people were apparently so yeah, racist so, against okay, Native Americans? Let's, now, let's let's take a quick step back. Let's lay out the, the basic ground rules of this movie. So, the, the way that we begin is we start with, there is a Native American proverb, and I immediately... <laughs> am out <laughs> yeah it's voiceover yeah, it's a wait, voiceover like, of the most universally known like white mom co-opted oh, yeah. uh native there american are two proverb. bears yeah there are that. two bears inside of you one is is all your hopes and good stuff and one is all your fears and bad stuff of the many bad things about the fact that it took fucking three years for this movie to get released um, one, of, one of which was the fact that so many memes have been made after this production. And all I can yeah. think about is like the Japanese and say inside you, there are three faces. <laughs> one is your good side. One is your bad side. And the other is Chef Boy RD. <laughs> <laughs> or the one that's like, there are two wolves inside of you. One's name is Tony. The other's name is Tony. They are both named Tony. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of the whole time. But oh, we are introduced via voiceover to our main character, Danny, who's the most Mary Sue of Mary Sue. She's very bland. She's yeah. very boring. I just like couldn't give a fuck about. I, I don't. Like, I don't like. I feel like if I was eleven, I would be like, oh my god, I want to be her because she has pretty much no character flaws and yeah. is like has like this empty protagonism that we yeah. don't really it she's is... supposed to be who we're following but i don't give a shit about her and she has no motivations for anything her central flaw is something that's entirely out of her control which yeah. doesn't uh, which doesn't count as a flaw <laughs> yes <laughs> right yeah unless so... i almost feel like the movie is insinuating that the movie was about her learning to control this, but there's so it's little, the, yeah. so little emphasis on her ability in general that it just doesn't have yeah. any. I mean, we don't impact. get a description of what exactly is her ability until eighty percent of the way through the movie. Yeah, right. and it's it's not the kind of thing that really should be a reveal that late because if the point is that she's going on this journey to control her own internal fears. You can't s- just shove that in in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. So I'm going to speed through the first chunk of the movie. So we find out that there are two bears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's chaos ensuing. The 
Danny and her dad have to run away and there's a bunch of scary stuff happening and then the acting and writing is very bad. And her name is Danny Moonstar and they're Native American. Moonstar. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly she's in an asylum, changed at the bed after she saw her dad die. And she's like, where the hell am I? And then a doctor appears and is like, let me explain. And then says that mutation occurs, occurs during puberty, which is that's like. That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. It, it, it's a metaphor for. I know, but stuff. like, that's a, not a <laughs> that's thing. That's always been an X-Men thing, though. Yeah, that's a, that's a constant like, X-Men thing. Like, your DNA doesn't just change. You know what this scene anyway, should That's been. something it you gotta just accept. Yeah, that's you're gonna have to yeah. deal with that. It should have been, there should have, instead of this doctor, let me explain, it should have been, record scratch, let me tell you how I got here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's basically what it was in dialogue form. Yeah, and so this doctor tells her that a, tells Danny that a Category 5 or whatever uh, tornado. tornado touched down in her town and killed everybody except her everyone on her native american reservation yeah. has perished except for her who was unscathed but danny knows that the thing that there was a giant monster that was growling at her and chasing her yeah um so then <laughs> the doctor says that like basically everyone's dead but you're safe as like a consolation like four <laughs> yeah. times and it's really weird and she also implies like because the weird thing to me is that she's like you survived because you're special like you got out without any kind of scratch on you when we saw her just like fall down a hill <laughs> yeah. like she didn't like she didn't use like like telepathy or telekinesis to like save her life yeah right. she's just out of the way <laughs> yeah um so we get into the intro circle for expository dialogue yeah where all of the mutants sit around with the doctor and the doctor's like let i want you guys to tell me about the first time you experienced powers and everyone's like i'm so over this and then this one girl's like i was running and i'm catholic and irish (laughs) uh Maisie, Maisie williams who's playing rain the werewolf girl Yes. Uh, she she's like my problem is Catholic guilt. Yeah, yeah she truly. she she turned into a wolf. She thought she was being. She thought she was possessed by a devil. She went to her priest, and the priest beat the trying to kill her. her. Yeah. yeah, and then Ileana stands up and is told by the doctor to show Danny around. She's the one with Lockheed. Yeah, her friend, the puppet. boy. Yeah. I love the little puppet. It's a very good puppet. It was a really good puppet. And the way, um, I actually really like the way that she interacts with it. Yes. And, yeah, it like, she like, like asks it questions the, and yeah. I think the interactions with her and the puppet are the only interactions that I liked of her in this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, she's a terrible person for the rest she's of the She's an asshole. asshole. Um, so she immediately calls Danny an Indian. Yeah. After we've established clearly that she's Native American. She was basically like, do you, showing her outside, and she was like, do you know how to grow weed? And Danny was like, no. And she was like, what kind of Indian are you anyway? Danny says, Cheyenne. And she said, she said, I wasn't actually asking. Yeah. Which, like, it's like what? really racist. <laughs> um, It's deeply uncomfortable. And then... She's like, wait, there's no fence. And then Ileana's like, yeah, you should run as fast as you can. You should go as fast as you can in any direction. and You'll just be gone. And then she runs into a force field face first and her nose starts bleeding. Yeah, so there's a giant orange force field dome around the whole complex. (laughs) Ileana's just mean. Yeah. So Ileana's like making fun of her and then she disappears because she can do that. Um, Danny gets really angry and punches the ground a couple times. And it's really funny. She she just she just she screamed and I had captions on it that said screams in frustration and she's just like ah! she's on her knees just like punching the ground like in the most melodramatic way. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um she gets on top of a clock tower and tries to kill herself. Yeah, or she then, she's yeah, she's considering it. Yeah, she's like pretty much about to jump off this clock tower and yeah. then Rain just appears um yeah. and it's like don't and she's like okay um <laughs> and then the she end. helps her inside and they look at each other for like a little too long and that's when nolan and i were like oh my god is this gonna be gay i think that's when every audience member goes oh is this gonna be gay? And we were just like the gay is beginning hello yeah yeah i literally wrote make it gay you absolute cowards <laughs> and they did they, they did, did. And they I, did make it gay was, that was the moment I was like, oh, maybe, maybe, Redemption, maybe, it's, maybe it could of. go up from here. And it no, it didn't. Did not. So then we see, uh, what's that actor's name? The guy who plays Sam. Heaton. Charlie Heaton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
of Stranger so Things. So we fame. see Charlie Heaton um, just <laughs> scream. He's like strapped to a concrete block. Yeah. And he screams as loud as he can, and he quote unquote <laughs> blasts off, and, and just starts bouncing around, screaming as loud as he can. Which is great because yeah. you just hear. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's basically he's his power is that he is a rocket that just fires off, and he's just spinning wildly, and he's also and, got like a cast and like a a, yeah. a black eye because because he, he he's not at all invulnerable. He just yeah. blasts off and runs into walls and then gets horribly injured. But my and that's, problem someone with says sequence. someone says uh, I, sometimes I think he's trying to kill himself. Yeah, so yeah. it's when Rain and Danny Danny's like, okay, I'll actually show you around the place. Um, and Rain is like framing it as like this is him going through some like serious self harm and <laughs> you just hear him in the <laughs> screaming <laughs> as this CG blur is just going around all crazy. <laughs> and it's like I can't feel bad for him because it's hilarious. <laughs> the Russian's last name is Rasputin. I thought that was funny. Anyway. Yeah. She's um, actually um Colossus's sister. Uh, which is cool. From yeah. from X Men, yeah. So then it's nighttime and everybody's in their rooms except for Roberto and Sam and they're like in the laundry room or whatever. And Danny is asleep and has some sort of energy reading coming up on the cameras. Oh, and she has flashbacks and then turns on a washer that scares Sam and he touches it and he sees a memory of a mine and it's scary. Apparently. Yeah, he's like a mine shaft with his dad and they're all being creepy. Everyone's making man noises. They're yeah. all going, oh, uh. Ooh, we're men. Yeah. Ooh, hit the yeah. wall with a thingy. And I think and it was that's this just kind of the end of that scene. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> like... this scene when I first realized that no part of this movie is going to be successfully scary. No, because um, yeah. they were going for it and it was not connecting. They were like, "Oh, this is going to be yeah. real scary. The wall is blood, and Dad is there." And I was like, "He's <laughs> in a washing machine." <laughs> like, so did he climb into the washing machine? He touched like, that was a the weird washing cut. machine and was teleported. Yeah. I guess. And then yeah. like the washing machine broke when he snapped out of it. It was weird. Right. Um, then it's shower time, and this is when gay. We were like, <laughs> is it gonna happen now? Yeah. We were like, but gay. also gay. It, this is Danny. I like, I'm already indifferent towards Danny, but Danny almost makes me like actively not like her. Yeah. yeah. In this moment, where so Maisie Williams' character has a brand yeah. as like a, a that was a mode of punishment for her being a mutant. And we'll yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a W. It, it probably for for witch, I witch. guess, and, they called her a witch. And so Danny comes in the shower, and they're they're both naked. And Danny says, like something along the lines of like, "Wow, intense body art. Like, was a tattoo not cool enough?" And I'm just like, "What the fuck?" And it, like, and it dude, seems to come from obviously. a place of genuinely thinking that was intentional, but it's like right, carved yeah. into her back. Like, mm-hmm. it's clearly not a, a fun body art thing. Like, yeah. why would she just have a W on her forever scarred like, into her on her shoulder? Like, yeah. That's and obviously I'm, a brand. And if, if I'm Maisie Williams in that scenario, like, that is a massive red flag in terms of developing yeah. a relationship yeah. with somebody. Also, I wrote, why are they showering towards the shower? I know it's for the camera, but it's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, does anybody actually, like, take their whole shower? Like, Only in movies. In the water? <laughs> like... I have to let I the just, water run down like, my face in order to feel it, something. They're yeah, trying yeah. to have a conversation, and I'm like, dude, there'd be, like, water in your mouth right now. Anyway. And this is also a place where I was concerned of just, like, how old these kids are supposed to be. Because yeah. I know how old, like, Maisie Williams and stuff are. But in, right. like, the comics and whatnot, and I guess it's kind of insinuated in parts of it. Like, they're supposed to be, like, 13, some of them. They look and, very young. And I'm yeah. like, mm. Maisie, um, I mean, Maisie Williams looks significantly younger than, like, Annie Taylor Joy and Roberto, yeah. and there—I mean—in yeah. the comics, well, there are, and, there are uh, a range of ages too. Yeah, Blue Hunt definitely looks like she's eleven in this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like she, she's got a very young face in this. And then we cut from the shower scene that gets really uncomfortable, and like, um, Rain leaves is like, I don't want to talk about it. And then we cut to Sam like just screaming at his reflection in the bathroom, and yeah. we're like, yeah. okay. Because he sees the visions first, so he's going crazy the fastest, I guess. Yeah, so he's just, like, looking at himself yelling, and then we cut to them meditating, and the doctor's just going, control, control. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus. It somehow doesn't, the whole movie doesn't 
engage with um with Danny's power enough in order no. to well, it, to make the plot when it sort of climaxes because she has it, nothing to control because she doesn't know what it is and also yeah. we don't know we what don't it know is. What it we is. don't even yeah. know that she has powers really at this point we know like, that yeah. she has some sort of power but we don't know that it's out of control i feel like if i if i could make if i could like reach back in time three years ago and make one small change to this movie it would be to have them have her be have them all know what her powers are right when she gets there yeah well, like also i think that her makes powers everything else more as well like, yeah. it's fine if she doesn't know. So then they're in a common room, and Ileana gets really racist. Yeah, super racist like, for no reason. so racist. Um, it's really uncomfortable. She, like, calls her Pocahontas, and, like, uh, it's really... She, well, she had already called her Pocahontas, and then she calls her Sitting Rock. Yeah. 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 Which is just, like, what the... Fuck. Like, and yeah. says like a bunch of other racist shit that I didn't write down because it, I was just genuinely uncomfortable. And then they get in a fight, and then they both get solitary confinement because they got in a fight. Now there is a moment here that I did like, and uh, it's when Doctor Reyes is like putting uh, Ileana in her cell, and she's like, "We'll see you in the morning." And Ileana has Lockheed in her in her in her hand. And she's like, "I'll see you in hell." <laughs> yeah, that that was kind of funny. Um, so then Ileana's having a flashback to, like, these smiley-faced people that are apparently her trauma, because everybody here is traumatized. Yeah. Um, and then in Danny's room, it starts snowing, blood, and then she has a flashback, and then she screams, and then the doctor comes in, and she has, like, just a little bit of blood on her. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Not I was expecting a full her to be, like, covered blood. in blood. She just, she just got a little spray of blood on her. Yeah. And then she's like getting medical procedures done like the doctor's taking blood from her and she says it's okay i'm a doctor and i'm like that <laughs> she says it with the conviction uh, of a first year improv student yeah <laughs> i was <laughs> like never in my life have i not trusted what somebody says when she says yeah. it's okay i'm a doctor and i'm immediately like this woman is not a doctor yeah. <laughs> she said it's okay i'm a doctor and my mother was a vet yeah, as yeah, if which that is was per- as yeah, if that she, was she pertinent starts, information like, like making a rattlesnake analogy about how you know baby rattlesnakes are more poisonous because they don't know how much venom to release she's like it's the same with mutants and i'm like okay yes like I, it's wild I like guess. i don't know i don't know how is she trying to make them all think that this is a nice place, like a nice no. hospital for them to... Because literally, she, in my notes, it says she's making a rattlesnake analogy. She is absolutely the antagonist of this film. Yeah, and, and like, right. the whole place itself is inherently scary. Like, the way they, like, the, the way that they light the fucking building is right. nightmare. like, the paint's peeling off the ceilings, and, yeah. you know, these nasty well, fluorescents. And it makes her completely uninteresting as an antagonist because, like... There's no, she's not putting up any front in terms of what her intentions are. Yeah, she's know? clearly a mad and scientist. And also, like, she's the only person who works in this whole place. <laughs> like, yeah, does she, like, yeah. change their Wait, sheets how, and stuff? What, yeah, like, what? I don't how? know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> At the beginning, I was like, when she first got there and she was first talking to Danny, I was like, wow, this place feels really empty. Like, budget concerns? Because, like, mm. it feels like nobody else works here. And then I realized that, uh, no, nobody else works there. Yeah. And, it's like, where do they, her. like, when, how do they get food shipped in? Like, like what is any, like. And I, there's a thing that's revealed later that we'll talk about, but, like, no extra security at all. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With six mutants. Any one of them could kill this doctor at any time. Yes. Absolutely. So then we get to Rain repenting, and it's a little gay. And then she has a flashback to the pastor who branded her, and she gets all scared. And it's a ghost, and it's so scary. And then Danny checks on her. Ooh. A little cool, cool cameo there. That's an actor named Happy Anderson who's in Mind Hunter, and he's really brilliant. He's really good. Mm, nice. I mean, he didn't have shit to do in this movie, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, they go to a secret attic. Ileana's still a bitch. They're doing a polygraph exam on everybody, and they sort of just get a lot of exposition out of the way. It's really yeah. boring. They bring up the bear thing again. They, they bring, bring up the bear up, thing. They bring up and, how Roberto's never fucked before, and everyone's yeah. like, ha ha, virgin. Yeah. And everybody's like, Ileana, well, Ileana's like, I killed 15 men one by one, and it was fun. Ha ha ha. And we're like, okay. Yeah, and, and the polygraph hey, stays a straight line. But my thing is that I feel like she could 
very easily lie and not right. trick a, a, she's, yeah, trick a exactly. she's sociopathic enough to where I was just like, oh, maybe she did, maybe Whatever. she didn't. Like, yeah. Yeah. So they go to group therapy in the morning. Sam's accent gets really bad in this scene. It, both <laughs> it of the sort of characters, fluctuated between good and bad, I think. Yes, both of the characters with accents had extreme polar opposites of whether their accent was good or not. Yeah. Um, but For the Russian accent, that, sometimes it was comically oh, oh, oh. overdone. And then sometimes it was like, this woman is an American. I thought you were and talking then, about Maisie Williams' accent, which I think is actually just no, her it's accent. Real. I was like, that's, yeah. that's, <laughs> no, that's her actual accent. No, but um, the accent for Ileana was also just all over the place. Yeah. Um, Ileana drugs the doctor, and then now it's a teen movie. Yeah, it's well, it, now it's literally the Breakfast Club shot for shot for a yeah, while. They're, they're <laughs> I actually kind of liked it. Like, actually, yeah, I didn't like, hate I was, that. I yeah. made it, I was like, oh, this is a better movie. Like, yeah. And I think all of their interactions felt the most natural here. Oh, absolutely. Like, I think even Ileana wasn't, like, violently mean. I mean, she was, yeah. but, like, in a way where it's like, oh, the one person in the friend group who's like that, you know what I mean? They well, were the least like, insufferable in this scene. That's yeah. She was, she was like, oh, I, I mean, she's the mean one, but we'd still hang out with her, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. You, yeah. you keep her around. Um. So then the the gays, <laughs> Danny <laughs> and uh, Rain, go off to Danny's not Danny's rain secret vent that leads yeah. out to the roof. There are so many secret locations that characters right. take each other I to know. in this movie. Rain's got a vent thing. Yeah. She loves them um, vents. <laughs> meanwhile, we find out that Sam killed his dad. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I, could, I could care less. I did, it literally it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and then the gays go to the graveyard and they're like looking up at the top of the dome like I really it's like raining this. outside it's really cute yeah because it's cause, like, like the, every time they make contact with the dome it makes like an orange ripple effect and so when it rains it's like this really nice kind of like rippling it's like a little firework the, show the sky. Cool. and they're watching it together and then they kiss I like the design of the the design of the the force fields actually I think they're yeah I think they're cool yeah, yeah. they're cool they're cool they're something they could have been they could have been very but... lame but they yes. did something cool with them man that is such a sad compliment like, <laughs> <laughs> their force fields are fine <laughs> that like the fourth um, biggest thing we like about the movie is the force field the thing that makes me mad plot thing. <laughs> this scene makes me so mm. angry because we get like this really sweet moment between them two like looking up at the rain yeah. through the force field and then we cut back to Roberto finding Ileana singing and swimming in a pool and Roberto's like, do you need some company? And Ileana's like, fine, but you have to turn off the lights. And it, like, gets all straight. Yeah. Um, it gets too all much. straight. <laughs> I mean, that's literally, that's exactly what it, it gets so I straight. Think so I think so unlikable. The, the person that they massacred the worst in this movie is Roberto. Is Roberto. Because yeah. in yeah. the comics, in the comics, magic at least is supposed to be a very morally ambiguous, like, so a bit of a sociopath. Roberto's um, just a... Asshole. Roberto's supposed to be a good dude. Like he's like he's supposed to be, you know, he's like kind of a womanizer in like the eighties way, but he's not yeah. he's not a predator, which this is. No, he's like this a Roberto literal misogynist like. and predator in well, this movie. Yeah. I wouldn't call him a pre- I wouldn't I'd say he's a predator, but he's a fucking simp. Like yeah. <laughs> he's not well, he's, he's, Yeah, it's, I guess he's the, a simp for Ileana. Yeah. There you know, there is one thing, one thing that I I thought was okay in this scene, and it was that like it does humanize Ileana a little bit yes. for a moment, even though it's um, not her. Even though it's not her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, so, it's, yeah, another, yeah. it's another. It's it another really hallucination. Matter. It's another hallucination that turns out to be a demon. But right. um, it. I think it. It does the heavy. It does as much heavy lifting as it can trying to humanize Roberto because we find out that the reason that what his power is is that when he gets like freaked out or hit, or like his heart rate accelerates or whatever he bursts into I get flame too hot um, I get too hot so apparently yeah, he literally he, bursts into flames yeah so apparently when he was hooking up with his girlfriend his powers activated and he like burned her burned alive her which um that's becomes the demon in the pool with him yeah and, and it's the so shit out of him. i guess he's like trying to compensate by being constantly predatory to everybody i don't know i don't like it yeah it's not good so he bursts into flames and uh we see on the cameras that iliana's in her room so we know that it's not her yeah and an alarm goes off everybody runs and the doctor's run is really funny (laughs) um (laughs) 
She just kind of like waddles. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, she she waddles into the into the pool room and yeah. then grabs and him, me, pushes him into the question, pool with a it stick. It made me yeah. question whether Alice Bra- Braga had ever ran anywhere yeah, before. Yeah, it looked like she has never. Wait, run hold on. We did not. We did not give that the proper land that it deserved. She grabs a broom and yes. just fucking shoves him into the pool. <laughs> she just like and knocks him over. We into cannot the pool just push to past extinguish that. Him. No, yeah, she just pushed his ass into the pool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then after this stuff, Roberto tries to leave and everybody, well, Roberto and Ileana turn on the doctor. They're like angry. And then she puts them in solitary confinement. It's whatever. It's boring. Um, (laughs) you could say that about any part of this movie. Right. Yeah. She drugs Danny. Uh, we found out that what was chasing Danny, I mean, the doctor drugs Danny. And is like trying to get answers from her. We found out that the thing was, that was chasing Danny was uh, the demon bear from the legend. Yeah, the the um, bear of sadness and fear and stuff. Yep. Yeah. And then we get weird B-roll footage of like people being thrown into like hospitals and stuff. Side note, right. So, side note so, about this. Yeah. Um, this, I don't, if if you've seen Logan, if you're listening to this and you've seen Logan, yeah, I, had I the think same they thought. just used the exact same like. Uh, yeah abuse I think in a it's hospital actually, photo stuff so so basically what danny is seeing so as she's drugged she her powers which i guess we're not supposed to know yet did you guys know what her powers were at this point no sort of not okay really. well so, uh, this is when i was learning starting okay, yeah. to so, learn yeah. so as she's being drugged she's her powers are kind of freaking out and she's seeing the doctor's like memory so she's seeing like the facility where like kids are getting tortured and, and trained and stuff which is the same, basically the same footage. It's the from exact Logan. same footage yeah. from. Logan. I think I'm I think that might be it. on purpose. Like it might be. It probably like it's is. supposed to be the same corporation. Um, and she also is her the all of the demons that have been chasing uh the this the other kids are going into overdrive too, and they're having you know hallucinations and and whatnot. Yes. So everybody pretty much gets their flashback scene in this next sequence, like as Danny's under influence of drugs. Um, cause like apparently her powers aren't like containable when yeah. she's drugged. Um, Rain gets literally physically branded by the pastor, like a, yeah. a demon version of the pastor. Um, is it the other way around? Is it an M this time? No, it's still a W. That's dumb. Why didn't they do it in M? <laughs> um, and then everybody's running around trying to figure out what's happening. They find out that it's, like, a physical thing. The demons can hurt you. And then Ileana tries to kill Danny because she's pissed off. And then Danny turns into, like, a monster. And then she gets scared. And then um, she drops Lockheed because she got drugged and to break up the fight. Yeah, Ileana drops, drops Lockheed. Danny brings Lockheed back to Ileana and tries to make up. And then we get all of Ileana's tragic backstory. It doesn't matter. God, I'm so um, sick of these tragic so, backstories. I, she's so racist that I'm like, I don't like you. It doesn't matter. You. Like, yeah. You're Anya Taylor-Joy, and I still don't like you. <laughs> yeah. Like, so then we see on the doctor's computer that she has orders to kill Danny, and she types in a code and is like, I confirm that I'm going to kill Danny. Yeah. Um. Then it's gay time, and they're hanging out together, being gal pals, and Danny's like, I think what I've seen is, like, what the doctor has done to people. I don't think this is a hospital. I think we should try to escape. And then the doctor's like, it's time for you to go away, Danny. And then they kiss, and it's cute. So she gets wheeled through a creepy hallway into a Frankenstein-ass, like, medical theater. Yeah. Um, Where the doctor continues her story about the yes. snake. with about being a vet about her mom being a vet yeah so she's starting to talk about how like how they had to put down her dog because he had rabies and he like bit a kid and so basically being like i'm going to put you down like a dog yeah the rest of the mutants are chilling in the living room except for roberto who's doing dishes they're Mm -hmm. watching buffy the vampire slayer i did write that down i (laughs) kind (laughs) of they hear music and find out that it's like iliana's the memory thing happening in a room somewhere and yeah, the it's smiley crazy. boys and smiley boys are big and real and here um then the doctor's like <laughs> basically saying i'm going to euthanize you and then yeah. puts some fucking food coloring in the iv bag 
that yeah. she has going into Danny, That's which I'm juice. assuming is supposed to be death juice, but it's green <laughs> it food coloring. It's like green food coloring. It yeah. is green food coloring because oh. guess what? Actual euthanasia drugs are clear. <laughs> yeah. Also, I do want to mention that um, Ileana's smiley nightmare boys are literally just the pale man. Yeah. Um, like we we talked They're about similar. the pale man last week, and it's it's literally the same. They're just like the but pale it's man, the but pale not man, cool. but shittier. Like yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's half pale man, half Slenderman. That's all it is. So smiley boys are multiplying and chasing them, and they're real, and it's a thing. Rain goes wolf mode and just like attacks. Yeah, drops the down doctor. through a vent, lands on the doctor, and starts vent. slashing her up, which is pretty cool. Especially it, since the story was about a dog that she had to put down. Yeah, Conven- nice. convenient, uh, convenient vent placement, though. Yes, Very right above the doctor. Vent. Some uh, some Batman Arkham Asylum vent this placement, to be sure. <laughs> yeah. So she like frees Danny, and of course Danny's fucking fine. Like it's <laughs> she's yeah, yeah. just she's fine. Literally fine within like ten seconds yeah. of getting out of the the, the fucking <laughs> face mask. Yeah. Yeah. So the doctor is like all slashed up and then is in the hallway where the smiley boys are. And uh, Ileana and Sam are like, Doctor, help! This smiley. Ah, monsters! <laughs> <laughs> That's an the actual line of dialogue. Yeah. Um, and then the doctor just fucking runs away the other direction and they're like, oh shit. Yeah. Um, Sam. Well, Ileana disappears. Well, yeah, so Ileana's freaking out. Sam's like, you have to yeah. do something. And then Ileana just disappears. Sam's like, like you have teleport. powers. Like, use them. And she's like, I can't. And then she just disappears. She just dips. Yeah. She's like, see ya. It's like, bye. I don't yeah. want to deal with this anymore. Sam takes off his hat, which unleashes his power, I guess. And then he explodes. <laughs> Does nothing of value. Oh, uh, you must release the hat to unleash the power within. And so they're running around. And Roberto's, like, fucking doing the dishes. Um, he's then, always doing the dishes, yet we we never see them eating. Yeah, we yeah. see them eat once. He's just, but he's constantly doing the. Dishes. He's doing the dishes. The smiley boy shows up, and he just like fucking punches him hardcore. It's pretty good. He does like a just a fast fire punch. He suddenly can control his powers pretty well. Yeah, like which, with incredible accuracy. Yeah, it seemed like he was super terrified of using them at all in the past, but right. <laughs> he's just fine. They're, so then Roberto and Sam meet up. They're running through a hallway, and suddenly Ileana is all powerful and arrives from the void and murders everybody. And it's, and it's fucking sick. I actually like this part where she just shows up and slashes through like seven smiley boys uh, across the stairs. It's but here's cool. the thing that disappoints me about this scene: is it Roberto saying that's hot? Because that's what ruined it for me. Yeah, and that also <laughs> ruined it for me. But I'm also saying that like. It's this type of formula that this movie has that ruins any chance of it ever being scary or like any sort of thriller yeah. Yeah. intention. Yeah. Because you're just like, they have superpowers. They can yeah. kill the things Which very should easily. Be a challenge for filmmaking that would make for an, um, an awesome movie. If you can make a movie with characters that have superpowers and make it genuinely scary as well, for them like, to that feel would powerless, be, that would be amazing. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, they've failed miserably. It was yeah. boring. Um, so they find their files that in the doctor's office, and they're like, oh, my God, we're not going to be X-Men. They want us to be murderers. Oh, yeah. no. Not for the Essex Corporation. <laughs> you mean this wasn't Professor X's fun murder hospital? Right. So they were like, okay, we need to get out. And they're like, but there's force fields. And then so they're like, well, let's just kill the doctor because the doctor's the source of the force fields. Yeah. Oh, you know what would have been cool? Sorry, this is just... Because you know she can make force fields that apparently can cancel out Ileana's teleporting. Because yeah. she should be able to get out whenever she wants, but she can't. Right. What well, if... she can teleport within the force field. Yeah, she can teleport within the force field, so she can't get out of the force fields. Which is never awesome. is never explained. But wouldn't it be awesome if she teleported into Limbo, and then the doctor made a force field that kept her trapped in Limbo? That would be cool. It's a great idea. But it's a poor use of, you know... Yeah. No, the they powers. they never gave any they thought n- to how these powers could be used together, how they could be used in general. It's very lazy. Well, um, how do they can be used in a way that isn't just like when you're playing rock paper scissors as a kid, and some yeah. kids like rock paper scissors dragon, dragon beats everything. Ha ha! <laughs> literally, right. literally. That's dragon. literally what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, I honestly is- think I think that Ileana's character is for me the most disappointing one of all of them because she yeah. has the coolest power set. She's you have Anya Taylor Joy in yep. the in the role and that's that's what you did 
And it's so and close. Honestly, a disappointing performance from her. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It's not. I mean, it's not her fault. It's not any of their faults. Yeah. The writing is so irredeemable that I don't yeah. think you could ever get anything from it. So they go to kill the doctor, and she's like, "Do you know Danny's power?" And literally explains it word for word. Yeah. <laughs> Danny makes people's nightmares come true. It brings them. She out makes you life. relive your worst memories over and over until you die. Yeah, which is a great power. Yeah. Yeah, she puts them into a bunch of force fields that kind of look like those jelly plastic balls that you <laughs> blow up with a straw, like bubbles. I, I half thought one of them was just going to start like push, like running with yeah, it, like, like that's what they look like, like a hamster like. wheel. <laughs> And she's like, you all can go, but I'm still going to put down Danny. She literally yeah. says, but Danny needs to be put down. I'm like, yeah. okay. It's like, do you see them as animals? Because if you do, that means you also see yourself as an animal. Like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And I mean, that that's a, an interesting motivation, but yeah. it's, there's nothing there. No, yeah. it's, it's totally hollow. Um, so everybody's in force fields and the force fields start like shrinking or something and everybody's yeah. like going to sleep and then Danny's asleep and then <laughs> <laughs> This is when the movie this this the movie jumps the shark here. Yeah. The movie yeah. jumps several sharks and a demon bear because a demon bear <laughs> appears and <laughs> bursts through the wall and picks up the doctor in his mouth and yeah. just eats her. Which does mean that so that is the full reveal of Danny killed everyone in her in her uh, all of her family members and everything. Yeah, and I'm like, so like oh when no. she goes to sleep, she can manifest <laughs> this demon bear thing, I guess, because she doesn't have control of her powers. Yeah. But like the fact that they were like, oh, we have to go kill the doctor, and then I was like, oh no, we're in forest fields, and then just a big bear shows up and <laughs> eats her. It's like okay, that was nothing. <laughs> yeah, I just like someone at a fucking board board meeting at fox is like demon bear how do we get a demon bear in this movie that's gonna be the big reveal the audience is gonna love the demon bear they've been this testing well recently been demon bear. Yeah. kids love demon bears kids i mean this was to be bears. fair three years ago i mean we all love demon bears like we were all talking about demon bears <laughs> true yeah everyone was so talking I, about I, demon I get bears it. i get it and then all the other board members were like do you even work here like <laughs> no he didn't that was me <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, the CG of this bear. It's not The CG good. of it's this bad. bear is so bad. It looks like a real-time render, but this is a movie. It's even worse because... Oh, and let's... And we can kind of... So, Danny's asleep. Uh, they're trying to wake her up so that they can shut off the demon bear. And Ileana... <laughs> <laughs> Ileana's doing everything. Yeah, Ileana's yeah, Ili- like, I'm gonna, I- I'm gonna beat the shit out of this thing. I literally and- wrote, Ileana solos the demon bear raid. <laughs> yeah. like- um, she And she does have a... I mean, it is horribly goofy and campy and if the rest of the script was better i would like this line but since the rest of the script is as bad as this line i don't like this line is when they go like what are you gonna do to fight that bear it's magic and then she turns around and goes i'm magic too and then runs into a portal and it's like Motherfuck, the bear's not magic also, we <laughs> like are, we know it's not magic we're, it's, it's we're never power. told that that's like her superhero name we don't learn any of their superhero names I thought yeah they says, never oh yeah you're right you're right yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and we do but, well. We do get Lockheed as like full Lockheed, which is yeah. yes. But that this it. was awesome. This was the only moment in the movie where I was like, "Oh fuck yeah!" It's <laughs> a full on the the puppet Lockheed turns into actual Lockheed. It breathes fire. It does a little Lockheed screech. Ten out of ten. Cool. Yeah. So basically, the demon bear is here, and Danny's stuck in this dream world. Um, that's like sort of reliving the last moment she had in the snow with her yeah. dad. Um, and she's like, "I don't know how to wake up. I can't do it." Ah, and yeah. everybody's like, you have to wake up to turn off the demon bear. Yeah, everybody's having their big self-actualization power moments one after another that are ineffective. Yes. While Maisie um, Williams is trying to wake her up. <laughs> Sam <laughs> says my favorite line in the whole movie. Yeah. Where he... <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. Can wait, I wait, wait. Shh. Can I say it, please? Yeah. <laughs> well, explain, explain. Ileana, Ileana has just literally. She's there's got nothing hurt. to explain. She's hurt. So Ileana is hurt, and the demon bear is in like this cathedral, and it, all, all hope looks to be lost. And Sam says, "Berto, nut up." Berto. <laughs> and that works. It works. Because Berto hasn't done shit this whole time. And Sam yeah. goes, but 
don't hey man, know what that come on, nut is up. That, is that what he means by that? Yeah, he means do something. Okay. But it's, hey, it's, it's incredible that that works. Like that's the line that nut brings up. Roberto out of out. That, that ends Roberto's <laughs> character what, arc. That's yeah. what you meant. That's what you meant by it works. I thought you meant it works for the audience and. Oh, no, 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 no. It no, doesn't, no. Brian. It does not work. It does not work as a line of dialogue. Um, I wrote But, but this... it works to to bring him out of his funk. Yeah. Ow. I I wrote after this, quote, he nuts up, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, he, he shoots fire, fire and it's, boy, ineff- it's ineffective. Also, like, he doesn't shoot fire. He just hits him with a bench. I also don't yeah, understand. He just hits him with a piece of wood over and yeah. over again. He's not yeah. using his power. But yeah. he is on fire while he does it. So. That's pretty cool. You'd think that would burn the bench, but no. Yeah. No, apparently not. And I, don't, I just don't understand what that's supposed to mean for his character. Like, he, he up. also wasn't afraid of his powers really anymore after the Smiley Boys. So I just, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, earlier in the action sequence, he was using his powers without any problems. But so I, I'm I don't just, know. why why the word nut? Why not up? Hey, hey! He he knew the word he needed to hear. Let's nut, <laughs> and it was nut. He said, "This man needs a nut." <laughs> nut up. Yeah. Oh, uh, um. Then in uh, Danny's dream world, her dad appears. Yeah. And she's like, he's like, "You gotta wake up, bitch!" And she's like, "I can't. <laughs> the bed's so big." And he's like, "But you're bigger." And I'm like. She's so big. (laughs) Which doesn't work because we have, like, no... We've had no scenes of her and her dad that give us any emotional connection to him or give us any reason to really give a fuck about that. It's weird that they've got it all set up so that Maisie Williams is trying to get through to her. And even, like, she follows the wolf, like, in in her dream world. She sees the wolf and follows it. There's a wolf in her dream world and she follows it because it's Maisie Williams and then it's the dad that... Yeah, Maisie Williams doesn't gets... get to get through to her. It's yeah. I honestly, dad who I honestly been. wonder because they cast the, the they cast Adam Beach as the dad, who's like a really great character actor that you'd recognize if you saw his face, and he's in yeah. the movie for literally two seconds. Yeah, and yeah. so I wonder if there are other scenes that were left on the cutting room floor with him that would. Well, let me tell you better. that the first scene of this movie, the one time he acts in this entire movie. It's bad. Like, his acting is terrible in the beginning of this movie, mainly because the script sucks. But yeah. yeah I, if I the also, script is bad, this, it was poorly directed. It's rough. It's poorly directed, that's for sure. Yeah. This movie, the, side note, this movie reeks of both awful writing, awful directing, and a bunch of studio meddling all at the same time. Oh, yeah. yes. You can feel it. You can, for disaster. You can feel like, stuff getting pulled out of the script. Well, like, you, you, can, can you can physically feel it, feel it trying to be eight different movies at once. For sure. And not doing any of them successfully. Yeah. So after she finds out that she's so big, <laughs> she crazy wakes up. Big. And she, she tells the bear to stop like a dog, and then it turns into her fucking little dog friend. She's like, good boy, pats him on the nose. He's all calm now. He's no longer a demon bear because she just said no. Yeah. So he stopped. And then went away. That and it went the, away. That was yeah. the climax. That was, that was the, climax the climax of the, of the movie. Film. She said stop, no, and patted it on its nose. And that was the end. Yeah. Oh, then we get a, a nice fade to all of them in the rubble, chilling, hanging out. And we get my New least favorite. New outfits on. New outfits, didn't even notice that. Yeah. But yep. then we get my least favorite trope, which keeps fucking coming up and it never works effectively, which mm-hmm. is happening to find a photo of you and your loved one uh, and then like looking at it fondly for a moment. Uh, it's, yeah. Danny it finds a picture hurts. of her with her dad from her file or whatever. It's like, what the fuck even? like it? Ne- that trope has never worked effectively. It's terrible. It's never and worked also, and it especially like, doesn't work in this movie because we have not seen the two of them together other than this dream scene for two seconds at all. We have no emotional attachment to him. And the only emotional attachment to him we have is from the very beginning of the movie where he fucking died like two seconds in. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, this is where Maisie Williams says that Danny saved them when she's the one who brought the demon bear. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, I almost killed you, but you saved us. I guess technically, but both are true. <laughs> and you can tell that this is the last scene in the movie because everyone's accents are oscillating so hard. Yeah. Like, uh, Ileana says something incredibly Russian. I couldn't for- remember what it was because I didn't write it down. 
And then the next line, she sounds like an American. Yeah. It's like, either it's either the very first scene that they shot or, yeah, the, or very the very last, last scene. scene. <laughs> also, uh, Sam throws uh, a rock really far into the air to see if the, the, the shield, the force field's still there. And he's like, hey, the force field's gone. gone. And like, of course it's of gone. Course it, of course it's you gone. watched the woman who was making it get torn apart and then By you picked up her shoe and all of her blood fell out of it. <laughs> yeah. So... They repeat the bear proverb again, and it's like, yeah. well, the one, the bear who wins is the one you feed, and then they walk off into the sunset, and, and I my, scream. My live, laugh, love sign is complete. <laughs> uh, God, I hated this movie. Fuck I think, this movie. I wow. think, like... <sighs> I've never wanted to punch a screenwriter so bad in my life. How did this, it's, how did this director get this fucking job? I don't like, know. See, like... And here's the, like, this is the thing, where, like, there's a lot of movies that you can blame how bad they are. There's a lot of X-Men movies that you can blame how bad they are on studio meddling pretty squarely. Absolutely. Yeah. This one, d- definitely that was a, a factor, probably two completely separate studios <laughs> meddling right. in different yeah. ways. Yeah. But, good God, was this horribly directed. Like, the performances are horribly, right. are, are... You don't get that just from from mi- these people without. Yeah, you know. they're misdirected in a way that you can tell it's the director because they're so stilted that you can sort of feel the actor's discomfort. Yeah, yeah. I honestly think, and this is a huge. This is like this is a huge thing for me to say. This is a bold thing. This is yeah. the worst Fox X Men movie, and that is saying something. <sighs> I haven't seen the rest of them. So for me, I, it I is. don't know. But it was a bad time. Is it worse than X Men Origins Wolverine? I was about to say I think it's slightly worse than X Men Origins Wolverine. I mean, it did feel like a fan fiction. I think it takes some bigger swings than X-Men Origins Wolverine did. It does. I, I think that X-Men Origins Wolverine is bad in a way that makes you really just, like, sad. And this is bad in a way that makes me angry, but I'm angry because it could have been good. See, X-Men Origins Wolverine also makes me angry. Um, but And I think it takes swings that are that make me angry in the sense of like uh, Ryan Reynolds original Deadpool like that yeah, makes me really yeah. angry. I mean, yeah. But I think this is worse because at least watching that I do have some emotional attachment to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Sure. And that's not that's not based upon what that what X-Men Origins Wolverine does with the character, but this I'm just watching the whole movie like I don't give a shit about any of this like i'm I telling don't you care. it feels like, like an 11 year old wrote x-men fanfic yeah and that's yeah. the movie mm-hmm. it does it does feel like that um and it's sad because it has a really interesting premise and setup it's got good bones in concept but terrible bones in script yeah for yeah. sure so is this <sighs> a good bad movie a bad bad movie or a guilty pleasure this is our first i think we can all agree bad bad movie yeah this i mean is... this is like this is bad bad and not even in the way of halloween 3 where it was like part like you could watch the first half of it and be thinking it was really good like yeah. this is yeah. bad bad and on a drunk out of a five it's it's a zero out of five no, yeah don't watch I disagree it. really i, I think, think it's so boring like i think though if you had to watch this movie once i would rather watch it drunk than sober I'd agree oh, with well, that. Because yeah, I, mean, I think fair. it would be... <laughs> imagine... Okay, imagine this. Imagine this. Yeah, yeah. You're plastered. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there on a couch with your friends. It's like midnight. You're watching this movie. This movie sucks so much. And then you see Demon Bear. <laughs> I think... Demon okay. Bear when you're drunk must be the funniest thing ever because I can't tell you how hard I laughed when I first saw Demon You'd Bear. You'd have to be drunk and not only... Like, you couldn't do it... Like, we couldn't just do it, us three. Like, yeah. I think you'd have to have, like, seven other people You have to be that's true. goofy. I could in see... Order to... I could see it being... There being a lot of big applause moments of, like, how fucking ridiculous it gets. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If you're super... If you're, like, a four out of five on the drunk scale. Like, I think... Um, I think that if you're... Because it also... If you're short-term memory or you're not paying attention and you miss some of the racism stuff, I think that magic... Uh, or she's not called magic, but her going up against the demon bear... Iliana. is very fun yeah. Yeah. Iliana is, is, her is solo very rating the demon bear yeah, I, like, I think if, you're, if you don't have that's the built up dislike of her character like that's sick I, I think yeah. if I just watched that on, on its own I'd be like this is good alright well. so that was an experience <laughs> we've all been through yeah honestly kind of worse than being chained to this desk yeah I, I'd yeah. prefer to continue staring at nothing 
on this desk? Or I feel emotionally. Students. I feel emotionally chained up at this point. Yes. And 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 so ends the Fox X Men franchise. Yeah. And isn't Good that riddance. fucking Man, depressing? It petered out. I, petered out I, in the way that I feel like it probably deserved to. I <laughs> really love. I really love at least half of the X Men Fox movies. And I like about a are, third of them. I think they are a a a an amazing dynasty of of superhero films that let everything else happen after it. Yeah. But good God, was it ready to end? I mean, yeah. it's there's nowhere else to go. Well, we're get, we'll eventually be getting new X Men. I'm point so excited! I'm so excited for new X Men. I think I think if you have to wipe the slate clean and do something fun and new and and wild and fantastical, and I, I, think I think you have to I get away from get this. That, so. Just delete yeah. this from everybody's memory. All right. That's enough of that nerd shit. Aw, man. Language. Pardon me, but my mom said that we need to curse less on this podcast, so if you could just... But join us again next Friday for a holiday-themed lesson in terror.